Hi, Gracie. And Ryan. And we are going to prune this beautiful St. Swithin climbing rose from David Austin. So um, a little bit different than pruning a normal rose bush that is um, not attached to something. Um, this is going to be about making the bush beautiful for the spring and not so much removing all of the growth. So um, we planted these about a year ago and they were uh, two-year-old plants when we planted them. And we have about 20, 25 of them on this three rail fence. And we just like let them grow wild for the first season in the ground. As you can tell, um, it's grown these nice big long canes, which now we are gonna train to grow along this fence. And the goal would be that this fence would be pretty much covered um, after this next season, hopefully by yep. 2024, be covered in green and light Beautiful. pink flowers. Beautiful roses. Yeah. So um, right now it looks really gangly and wild, but we're gonna change all of that. So with um, pruning a climbing rose like this, um, and you can grow a climbing rose like on an arch, a pergola. Um, we've just chosen to grow it on this, more like a rambler than a climber. Um, the, the objective to this is re removing all the foliage, mm -hmm. removing all of the um, spindly growth on the inside of the bush, and then we're going to make it um, have a nice form by attaching it to our white fence here. So Ryan's going to remove all this foliage. It's a little bit of a job. Yes, it is. Wear gloves. Wear gloves. Especially and then I would one. trim that top part. Because nothing good's going to come from that. Yes. So we're only going to trim off like the very tip of these. We're not going to go into like a heavy prune on this because all of this, all of this here will produce beautiful lateral shoots um, that will be covered in flowers in April. So we want to leave all that. So what Ryan's going to do is just remove a lot of foliage right now. So he's going to get into the inside of this plant right now and do some cleanup. All that spindly stuff, we don't want it. All we want for this rambler or climber, whatever you want to call it, are these nice, big, thick canes that we can attach to the fence. The spindly stuff, we don't need it. Um, it's not going to produce nice, big flowers. It's very, very skinny, and it's just going to cause the plant to look um, not so pretty once it starts growing in about a month from now is when we'll start to see growth on this. So um, just gonna clean up these long canes, which it really did a lot of, put on a lot of growth this year. It certainly this did. This isn't even the biggest one. There's a couple down there that are much bigger. So I'm impressed. So this rose is an older David Austin rose. I don't know exactly how old, but it's not a new release. Um, it has big, big light pink blush. I wouldn't say blush. I'd say more like a ballet pink, like a little girl's ballet leotard or tights. Um, very heavy uh, blooms. Big, big, heavy, heavy, dense blooms. Very dense. If you live in a moist climate, maybe not the best choice because the blooms are so dense and so thick that moisture could get trapped in there and then you would have blooms that don't open um, and they would... Um, create mildew and rot inside the blooms. But for here in Southern California, it's a great plant. Um, yep. It doesn't have like the most wonderful repeat because um, it is a little bit of an older variety and some of the newer varieties, uh, the repeat is stronger, but it's still really, really pretty and I love it. And I, it's the perfect rose to grow on this free rail fence um, because it has so much vigor, as you can tell, like this is a lot of growth for one season. And um, it's, you know, it's perfect for covering a large expanse if you if that's your goal and that was our goal here so so these canes already have um butt eyes pushing on them because it hasn't been a horribly warm winter so far but we are in southern california so the roses truly never go to sleep here um when you prune here in this climate or arizona any of the warm dry southern southwest climates um your butt your roses are already waking up for spring before you're even pruning them. Um, they just truly never go dormant, uh, which can be good and bad. We actually used to farm in an environment that did have a dormancy. Our roses absolutely went to sleep in November every year and they did not produce flowers again until May. And our spring flush was magnificent because, when she said? Bonkers. Yeah, it was bonkers. Like, 
the amount of flowers were just insane because our roses had that true dormancy where they just rested for like three months. They really were sleeping. And the first bloom on those was just millions upon millions upon millions of blooms in our fields. Um, you could never cut enough of them. Like there was, you couldn't cut them all. Um, and our first flush here in Southern California is beautiful too. Loads of flowers, millions of flowers, but I have noticed that it's a little bit of a difference between the two climates because we just don't have a dormancy here. Okay, this looks really good. Um, and again, Ryan will clean up all of this foliage on the floor afterwards, but right now we're gonna start shaping the plant a little bit here. When you have a cane that is going this way, outward, right? Yeah. By bringing it backwards like this, you're causing tension in the cane all along here. And that tension is actually good because it means that these butt eyes on this back side are gonna shoot out and you're gonna have new growth about every six inches on the back side of this cane. It's really good. It covers the plant. So you get, instead of a bloom here, you're gonna get blooms all the way down this cane, especially because you're creating tension. So let's go ahead and just attach that there. And there's really like no right or wrong way to do this. Um, you just have to work with like what you have on the plant, basically. Let's get this guy down here on this center. There you go. And basically we're just gonna be like reinforcing the main canes so that we tell them how we want them to grow this season. Um, and like I said, there's no right or wrong. It's just whatever you have to work with, attaching it to whatever your structure is, is what we're doing. So um, how about over here? Some over there. Yeah, this <laughs> long one. Let's have this be the top cane on the fence. And if you have enough canes, obviously you want to have coverage on your top, middle, and lower rails if you have a three rail fence. And then let's take this one, if we can, and kind of like bring it back here. Maybe tuck it in here. Yeah, maybe tuck it in. Because we don't want to cut off this long cane because the plant did produce it. Um, we don't want to get rid of it because that would be sad because it's a nice, nice big cane. So we're just, the goal here is just to start training the plant and you really probably can't do this year one even here in california where we have a long growing season we couldn't do this in year one this is year two for this plant in the ground um so you definitely have to wait you kind of have to let them grow gangly for a little bit for each season or so but once they get to have these about five foot long canes you can do this now of course if you're growing it on an arch you can start training it sooner Let's get this guy here, kind of bring it back a bit, and then let's just tie those on. And then I think this looks really good. And then Ryan will come through and like trim out. And it is okay to have like these canes in the front because they're they're pointed backwards. They're not pointed out. So that's that's fine. Any canes that are already going the direction that we want, which is toward the fence, you can just leave. You don't necessarily have to tie them. Um, it's really just like the big, strong, supportive canes that you really wanna train back. I was gonna bring this one down. So bring the tip of it down and tie it. Give it a little more tension. And this looks really good. Um, it'll be really pretty to see when it starts growing and has roses on it. So this looks good to me. Um, we may come in and do a little bit more trimming out, but this is the idea. And if you were to look at the plant from the side, everything is sweeping backwards, which is what we want, and then out, so that we have a beautiful, um, yeah. beautiful plant in the spring. Looks good. Yeah. So this is how to um, prune, or I don't know. I hate to say prune, but. Uh, do an architectural uh, element in your garden with a climbing or a rambling rose. And this is a three-row fence. Bye. Thank you.